Get ready for GitHub Universe, a new image generation model that you can run locally, a great LLM workshop, and a pick of the week for font nerds and just nerds in general. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. I was going to wear my not at all brand approved custom GitHub t-shirt in the Brat font. But alas, Charlie XCX has declared Brat Summer over. And so I'm just doing like, I guess like emo fall or, or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that is a good segue, however, because now that it is September, we are just six or seven weeks away from GitHub Universe. And this is our biggest event of the year, our annual uh, developer conference. And this is the 10th anniversary of GitHub Universe. So you know that we'll be doing lots of special stuff. You can register now and join us in person in San Francisco on October 29th and 30th, or you can join us virtually online and you can learn more at githubuniverse.com, link down below. Oh, and if you see me in person, please say hello. Speaking of events, I know that we have some .NET devs out there, so I wanna plug the .NET Conf, which is a free three-day virtual developer event celebrating the release of .NET 9. And this is co-organized by the .NET community and Microsoft, and it's gonna be held online November 12th through the 14th. November 12th is my birthday, so nice release date in .NET 9. Details on that are linked down below too. One of the things that you will surely be hearing a lot about at GitHub Universe and honestly, probably also .NET Conf is AI. And so I have a few pieces of AI news to note. First, Microsoft made some updates to its 5.3 series of LLMs, including 5.3.5 Mini, 5.3.5 Vision, and a new member of the 5 family, 5.3.5 MOE, or Mixture of Experiments model. So 5.3.5 Mini enhances multilingual support with a 128K context length. 5.3.5 Vision improves multi-frame image understanding and reasoning, and the 5.3.5 MOE features 16 expert and 6.6 .6 billion active parameters, providing a high, high performance, reduced latency, multilingual support, robust safety measures, excelling over larger models while still upholding the five model efficiency. The five series of models are something that I've really enjoyed playing with locally, especially 5.3 Mini. And in just the couple of weeks that I've had to play with 5.3.5 Mini, it offers some really nice improvements. And when you consider that the 5.3 family only launched in April, the rate at how much this stuff is improving is really incredible. So I've got links um, and more info on the 5.3.5 series of models down below. Speaking of new AI models, some members of the original Stable Diffusion team have formed their own company, Black Force Labs, and they launched their own text-to-image generator, Flux. And you can think of this as kind of a, a newer Stable Diffusion. And, and Flux is available in a variety of ways, both professional users via an API and non-commercial use cases, which you can run locally. And I have to say, the results are really, really good, especially when it comes to text. The easiest way to try out Flux is probably using Grok, Twitter's, excuse me, X's AI chatbot, which uses Flux under the hood for its new image generation features. But you can also swap um, in Flux inside Comfy UI if you have that set up for Stable Diffusion. And so I've got a link to the instructions in the Comfy UI repo if you want to try stuff out on your own, assuming your GPU is powerful enough. And, and I've got links to all that down below. And finally, I wanted to note that Sebastian Mashka, who is a data scientist and machine learning researcher, put together a really great workshop on building large language models like GPT-3s and, and the Phi series of models. The workshop is about three hours long, it's available on YouTube, and then he has an accompanying GitHub repo as well. And Sebastian also has a book on building LLMs too, if you wanna check that out. I really love finding resources like this, and I find that for myself, even though I genuinely have little interest in building an LLM from scratch, learning how to do it makes it easier for me to then build tools and understand using other LLMs. So it's good stuff. And now it's time for my GitHub project spotlight. So this time I wanna highlight a project from a few years ago called Space Huggers, which was an entry into the 2021 JS13K games competition. And its author Frank Forrest detailed how he built Space Huggers on his blog. And, and this is what he says. Space Huggers is a run and gun roguelike platformer with procedurally generated environments and a pixel art style. And then Frank writes that he was inspired by games like Broforce, Metal Slug, and Contra. And the engine was written from scratch in pure JavaScript. And he's since open sourced it under the name LittleJS. 
It's rare that we get this sort of insight into how people build games uh, for game jams or, or in general. And, and I really love that Frank shared his process. And so I've got a link to his GitHub repo and blog post down below. And I also wanted to note that the 2024 edition of the JS 13K uh, Games Jam is running right now. And by the time this goes up, you'll still have some time to get in your entry, which closes September 13th. So if you're inspired by Frank, take part this year. And now it's time for my pick of the week. I love fonts, and I especially love mono-spaced or retro-inspired fonts. So I love seeing this new release called Departure Mono from Helena Zhang. And I also want to give a shout out to the website, which was built by Tobias Fried, which is just a really cool way of showing off the font. And this is how the website describes Departure Mono. Departure Mono is a monospaced pixel font inspired by the constraints of early command line and graphical user interfaces, the tiny pixel fonts of the late 90s, early 2000s, and sci-fi concepts from film and television. And you know what? Helena absolutely nailed it. The font is both retro and futuristic, and it reminds me of uh, the time when CRTs were going away, but LCDs were not that great, and, and you'd see really fun pixel fonts in games and on the web. The font is free, uh, but you can donate if you choose, and it's licensed under the SIL Open Font License. And so I've got a link to the font and the website down below. Let me know what your favorite monospace font is. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that or anything else that we covered this week in the comments down below. We'd love to get your comments. That is gonna do it for me. If you liked this episode, please leave us a like. It really helps out the algorithm. And subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.